Just about ready to go here in our second and final bout on Before the Bell between Noe Larios Jr. and Nikita Ababi. White chocolate in the white trunks with the black trim and Larios in the all black trunks with the pink writing going down the side, or the red velvet rather, going down the side as we begin here. Nikita started out with two sharp jabs. This fight is definitely going to be a battle of the jabs as they both are rangy. Um, I want to see what uh, Lopez does with his jab tonight. Nikita Bobby, part of that famed Sosa crew in Brooklyn, growing up over in Brighton Beach, fighting with the likes of Richardson Hitchens and Rashad Mahdi, Chris Colbert. Trying to put it together here and continue his boxing career, again, entering at 11 and 0. He wants to stay active after this fight. He's targeting an, another fight date in August. I know Nikita's been out of the ring for, for several months, and it's, it's been a bit of a layoff, but I know he's been in the gym. He's been working on things, and you can tell by his body, this is the best physical shape that I've seen him so far in the pros. And he is so experienced as an amateur. And as honestly, these types of fights are where those experiences, when it comes down to being highly skilled, pay off. You have guys that are tough, durable, and can fight, and those little slight edges you have of being a champion and already fighting at the high level as an amateur, this is where it shines through. Both fighters standing at six feet tall even. No, Hilarios had to deal with a shorter Kima de Jarko back in December. Came forward, was pretty durable. He knew he was losing over the course of those first eight rounds against de Jarko. Went for, a, went for it a little bit in round nine, and that's when Ajarko was able to catch him with a left hand, and the match ended there. The right good, hand good gets in there. from a Bobby. Right, right hand. Bobby has great hand speed. Quick jabs, good counters, and watch out for that left hook to the liver. Big body puncher. Lopez cannot allow Nikita to get comfortable, and same vice versa. No, just like we said before in the last fight, we're in Texas. They're going to look for activity. That's a major part of the scoring process. So these guys are taking it really slow in this first round. And they have to remember, it's only an eight-round fight. It's still not a 10 or 12. So Ooh. every second counts. Great left hook by Mikita above. Good Tries to come in hook there. back for that right hand. Amo Williams, of course, grew up in Houston. He knows all about the Texas fight game and how everything is measured and scored here in the Lone Star State. Nikita Bobby and Noe Larios Jr. in a very much feel out first round. I like the fact that Nikita is controlling the center of the ring with the taller man. It's a very smart strategy. Very smart strategy. Very smart strategy to negate a guy like no uh, Lopez from engaging. This gives this gives Nikita a great chance to set up counter shots. As we've seen, there was a couple big counter straight right hands that Nikita landed in that round. Very sharp round for Nikita. After a long layoff that he's had, this is a great sort of round to shake those nerves. And uh, I think now we're going to see him get a lot more comfortable in this fight. Didn't look like he had any ring rust to me. But Bobby said he had to take care of some mental and personal distractions. And he believes that, especially for boxing, you have to be mentally right in your head. You can't worry about anything else. He told me that you, you can't let anything shake up the structure of your training sessions, your diet, your meal plans. And he said that he just had a lot of distractions and that his brain was everywhere. But he said he is a lot better now. He's only worried about boxing. Had a chance to live and train with Ryan Garcia, work under Joe Goosen earlier this year in preparation for his return and his 2022 debut as we begin round two here on Before the Bell of Bobby and Larios. White chocolate in the appropriate trunks. That's a very smart thing for Nikita to say, having to get himself together outside of the ring before he came back into the ring. Because one slip up in this sport is unforgiving. And uh, also, to perform well, you have to be in a great state. So that's very mature of him. He said exactly that for a sport where one loss, one off night can wipe away everything that you tried to build up prior to that. You need to be in the right frame of mind. And he also mentioned he started working with a guy like Ryan Garcia because 
he wanted to associate himself with Lions again. He knew he knows that he is one of those Lions, and he just needed that reaffirmation. He works quickly here with that lead left going upstairs and downstairs. I'm very happy to see him go downstairs. It's the same thing we talked about in the last fight. If you want to slow a guy down like Lopez, you have to invest in the body early. Good counter overhand right from Mbappe. Nikita is doing a great job of negating the height and reach advantage of Larios. He's pulling it back just at the right times. He's touching the body. He's changing levels. Excellent rhythm so far. It looks like Lopez just found Nikita with his first jab. Oh, oh Larios, I'm sorry. It looks like he's found him with his first jab, and uh, we'll see how he builds on the top of that. A three-punch combo from Bobby. Lightning quick. Larios tries to answer. The arm length evident when you take a look at the frame of Noe Larios Jr. Again, 14 and one with six knockouts coming off his first pro defeat. Lightning quick right hand lands by Ababi. Beautiful straight right hand by Ababi. And uh, again, when he starts finding shots like that, to come back with a left hook will be devastating for Larios. Ooh. Another right hand. Good shot. Nikita utilizing his speed very, very well tonight. He's not working too hard. He's setting up his shots, picking them perfectly, and landing them clean. Mario's trying to come inside with that combo. It's a lot more action in this second round than there was in the first. Um, I think we're going to see that ramp up over the course of the fight. I agree. You can tell Nikita's building. He's building on what he did in round number one. This is round number two, a scheduled eight-round fight. And we can't get careless. Neither one of these fighters can get careless because because they both carry knockout punch power. And uh, in the middleweight division, you have the speed and the power. So it's going to be very important that they stay calculated and not get overexcited for any shots. Nikita is measuring them out with the left, left jab. Speed on display in round two by Nikita Ababi. I got Nikita 2-0 right now. I think if he continues to build off what he's doing, he can take this fight home pretty easy. I want to see how Larios uh, responds in this third round after taking his first real shots from Ababi. I like the punch variation, the punch selection by Nikita so far. He's picking his spots very well. He's been working on that right hand over the top. Not only a punch I'm, I'm used to seeing him utilize a lot, but it's, it's been working really well tonight. Which is a great weapon against a small guy like, like Larios. Nikita's already up off the stool. That's a great sign as far as conditioning. Round three underway between Ababi and Noe Larios Jr. You talk about the conditioning of Ababi. There's a reason for that. He was touching on the camps that he was in with Garcia as he comes forward with a left hand there and just working under Joe Goosen. These are four or five hour days with Joe Goosen and the conditioning that they went through. Left hand to the body by Larios. He tries to fight back here. I think a lot of it though is, is this newfound pace that Nikita is using. I think he's he's worked too hard sometimes in past fights. Now he's really settled in. He looks like a real pro, picking his spots and using that speed to be explosive and effective. You're seeing Nikita start the round off with a few explosive shots. Normally for a fighter, that's testing the other fighter to see where their head space is. What are you gonna do when you know that I'm now going for the knockout? When I know, when you know now, I feel like I have you measured out to where I'm gonna catch you with one of these big shots. So it's very important to how Larios um, reacts to the shots that were just thrown by Nikita. Both men working in the center of the ring. Bobby controlling the pace so far, fell into a great pace in his victory back in October in Fresno against Sonny Duverson. And this is a different looking, more energetic, oh, close range uppercut. Good uppercut on the inside from, from Larios. Could have been a little bit late, depending on I want to think the ref was breaking them. Now this is where we cannot get out of control. As I said before, both fighters have the ability to knock someone out. You can't get overconfident or overcomfortable. You have to stay very poised 
and look for the shots that are going to do damage. Larios landed more punches in the last 30 seconds than he has up until this point in the fight. Yes. Turning up the tempo in round three. Ababi looking for answers. Gets a good left body hand shot. buried into the body. Body shot. And as I went, I talked about before at the beginning of the round, mental warfare. This round is about mental warfare. Nikita came out to show Larios that he was going for the knockout. And now that Larios is still coming forward, now the game is in, now it is a mental battle between Ababi and Larios. Now the fight begins. Now the fight begins. You normally can take a fighter's heart when you show them that you're going to knock them out. Bobby keeping Larios at a distance here in round three. This is where we're going to see what the camps were like, who's really conditioned, who has the mental strength, and who is the most disciplined. About a 12-second differential between the round clock and what was displayed there. Left hand cracks Larios. Nice. You can tell Larios is building in confidence. Good back and forth action in round three, but that was obviously the best round by Larios of the fight. To start off a round, coming forward, throwing hard shots, and to end the round going backwards and letting the guy throw more shots than you is not a good look in Texas. Nikita must remember, it's very important to finish rounds as similar as you started the round. Yeah, definitely a shift in momentum in that round. Larios fighting his way back into the fight. Not sure he won that round, but he definitely landed the best punches of the fight so far. It all started with that uppercut on the inside that he landed, popped Nikita's head up. He landed a few more right hands after that, but I believe Nikita took back control later on in the round. I do like the aggression from Larios with that close range uppercut. Maybe a little late, maybe not. Who knows, protect yourself at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Well, the rep didn't say anything, so. Let's see how this round starts. Here we go, round four. Nikita Ababi, the white trunks with the chocolate dripping at the waist. And Noe Larios trying to bounce back from his first pro defeat. He enters at 14 and one. Ababi, an undefeated 11 and 0. I believe that this is a pivotal round. If Nikita can come out and bring back the dominance he had in rounds one and two, I think he'll have an easier night. But if he lets Larios back into this fight, we could be go in a scrap until the eighth round. Looks like Larios is targeting the body. Uh, it must be, that must have been an adjustment his, his um, corner decided to make. Um, it's going to be very tough for him to get clean headshots on Nikita, um, somebody who's so seasoned. Um, so the body shots are the best way to go. Long looping left hands like that are not the best not the best thing to do against a guy like Larios. Also good to touch body when you have someone who's a quick handed as Nikita Ababi. Those guys generally spend a lot of energy, so you want to hit him in the bread basket, get some of that juice down. Okay, they're both sharing the middle of the ring right now, so we're definitely at a common ground here in this fight. It's the momentum is anybody's for the taking. Round four of eight. Ababi slips for a moment. Larios takes advantage, moving inside. We cannot get overexcited for shots. We need, the jab is lacking for both. We need to pick up the jabs to find the proper shots. There's not many one-twos being thrown in this fight. Um, that's a very essential tool for boxers to have. Larios coming inside. He's met with a two-punch combo from Ababi. Yeah, it almost seems like they're going tick for tat now. Yep. Back and forth, big shots. And when things are so closely, you know, when it's the competition is so close like this, you have to be the person coming forward, pushing the pressure, and landing the more significant shots in Texas. That's very important in Texas. I love how you keep bringing that up because it is so true, and I'm curious from both of you, do you how often, Chris, did you go into different settings, different states, various commissions, and ammo, your current career, how often is that at the top or near the top of your mind where you're fighting and what these different commissions in each state look for? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you also, so in big title fights, you know who the judges are in advance and you know what they're looking for based on their, their past experiences and fights. So you always kind of look into that to make sure that you're being a true professional and know every aspect of the game because when it comes down to fight night, you don't want anything to go awry. Oh, big all right hand. Big punch there here in round four. Larios capping off with the right uppercut. 
Larios is getting comfortable. Now with a fighter like Larios, very, uh, very, very conditioned, and not only that, very durable. You don't want a fighter like him to oh. get comfortable. Uh, Bobby dropping his hands here in the latter stages of round four. There can be no lapses in fundamentals right now. He was caught with a left hand moments ago by Larios, and that's two crisp rounds for the Escondido California native. When shots are that clear that the crowd react to it, that's a bad sign. Um, the reason why is because that can sway judges. For Lorios, it's an amazing sign, but for Nikita, it's not that great of a sign. That can easily sway judges' decision and who they give the round to, especially in a closely competitive round like that. I gave that round to Larios. I think those shots were strong enough, they were clean enough, and there was enough of them that he could take the round. Larios is very much in this fight. Larios is definitely in this fight, but one thing I do love that I see is Nikita is still very poised and very calm in this corner. Absolutely. Seems like Larios is very, very focused. Round five set to begin in this scheduled eight rounder here on Before the Bell. Nikita Ababi on the left side of your screen in the white trunks. Noe Larios Jr. in the black trunks trying to rebound from his first career defeat and hand Ababi his first career loss. Larios made his way to the middle of the round, the center of the ring, and he's taken that position. That's very, very strong signs from a guy like Larios. He's showing that he's here to fight. He's not retreating at all, and uh, the judges definitely see that. I believe the second half of this fight could be very interesting. Nikita using his jab, range finding. Range finding. Good. One, two. Back to the fundamentals. I think I think I like this pace better for Nikita. He's able to control using the jab. He got away from that for the last two rounds. Jab to the body. That's what we talked about at the beginning mm -hmm. of the fight. Comes back with the right hand following that jab. The straight long shots are going to be very important for two rangy fighters. So the variety that Bobby is showing with his left hand is very important. We see it going upstairs and downstairs here around five. A big left hook from Larios lands. Larios needs to pick up the activity. At the end of the day, he is still coming in on a B-side. Mm. He has to be very, very convincing to win this fight. Good chopping right hand there from Ababi as Larios came in. Chris, I know you've been around Ababi in the New York City fight scene. We've sometimes seen him at his best when he's going to the body more often. Do you want to see him pick up that tempo downstairs? Yeah, I, I did mention that earlier. You know, I, I think his best fight in his arsenal is that punch right there, the left hook to the body. Um, I've seen it in the gym. I've seen it in his early fights. A lot of his stoppages have actually come from body shots, so I would like to see that weapon more often tonight. And he mentioned how he sparred you. Yeah. yeah. I've, sparred, I've sparred Nikita several times. He's been in camp with, uh, with myself and, and Daniel Jacobs. Um, he's a very, very talented young man. And that's another thing with someone like him. Even though he has so much amateur experience, he's got a ton of gym experience as well, sparring with the likes of many world champions. One thing that I'm not seeing a lot of is close quarter inside. Oh, by... big right hand lands by Larios. And he goes back downstairs with the left. Absolutely ammo. It's a lot of long distance and middle distance fighting. Ooh, big right hand from Larios. These are the segments of time that give a fight, uh, give the edge to either fighter. And these moments on the inside, especially in Texas, they want to see you fight and land clean, effective shots on the inside as well. A double left hook landing moments ago from Noe Larios Jr. Last dance. He is putting together solid rounds in the middle portion of this fight. Right hand landing from a Bobby. And again, Larios with his third straight strong round. What did you feel about that round, Chris? I thought it was a strong finish of the round by Larios, but I believe that Nikita was in control for the majority of the round leading up to that point. He finished strong with a big right hand as well. Here we see the right hands over the top, the one, two. Nikita was doing very well at that middle distance range, using his jab early in the round. There we see him reaching for the body, landing some good overhand rights. But at the end of the round, Larios, as, it's, as he's been doing the last several rounds, putting a lot of pressure in the last 30 seconds of a round, trying to steal it.
Last three rounds of this fight, very, very important. I think the person who realizes that they should get on the inside and take advantage of that portion of the fight will be the one who comes out victorious tonight. I agree, Emma. I would love to see some sustained inside work from both these guys. Here we go with round six. Scheduled for eight between Ababi and Larios. Larios again coming out with a very strong demeanor. He's still here to fight. He's still looking for the big shots. Nikita should fight a little bit more on the front foot. Again, as I keep going back to, we are in Texas. This is a firefight state. You must show the fight, the crowd, and the judges that you are here to be the force in the ring. Nikita Ababi promised fireworks. Perhaps we see them over the last two rounds and change. Now this eight rounder. See, these moments here, when you learn how to create space, you learn how to pivot, you learn how to find shots on the inside, that's very important, not only for the judging, but breaking a fighter down. That opportunity you have right there is a lot of body shots and uppercuts. Mario's pairing the jab from a Bobby moments ago, trying to move cleanly, using his reach advantage there with that long looping left. Looks like Nikita's trying to get creative now, trying to open up some different kinds of punches. Not much steam on that left hook, but a very beautiful punch to throw. Now Larios is going downstairs. I think he has the right idea. Triple jab from Nikita Ababi. Ending with the solar plex to Larios. Overhand right by Larios. I think that was a great attempt, uh, but the lack of footwork. No, 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 no. That moment right there, that's essential for fights, especially championship level fights. You can sneak in a couple body shots in a moment like that, and those tiny body shots cause major differences down the stretch. Absolutely. That's a great point, Ammo. There's a lot of more work that can be done on the inside in the pros than in the amateurs. Mm. Good right hand from Ababi. Timed it up nicely with Larios encroaching. Body shots. Nikita doing a good job of pot-shotting this round, staying on the outside, picking his spots well. A fight, uh, a punch that's lacking in this fight is the uppercut. You get guys that's used to fighting on range a lot, a sneaky uppercut is a game changer. That's a shot that normally the long fighters don't see, and that can end the fight quickly. Three-punch combination from Nikita Ababi. Proving to be the more accurate puncher here in round six. It looks like a lull in action in this sixth round. Um, a couple of great exchanges, but not many. I think they're both trying to figure out what they're going to do to end the fight. Left hook from Larios. So the rounds that could swing in a fighter's favor. And again, accuracy on tap by Nikita Ababi. See matchup chairman Eddie Hearn. Bobby is one of the first boxers that Hearn signed when Matchroom arrived here in the U.S. You know, in that round, Nikita, almost as if he feels that this fight could potentially go the distance, changed up. He started to take, take, he took some of the power off his punches, used his hand speed, used his fighting, his ability to fight at a distance that round. Moving on his back foot, hot shotting, and in my sense, won that round. Coming up as a young prospect that, you know, I am, these fights are important because you have to not only beat these guys, you have to make a major statement in these fights. I think Nikita has these last two rounds to make a huge statement. It's very important for him to make a statement tonight to move forward in his career. Emma, you could be humble about yourself. I'm not calling you a young prospect anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You have, you have entered. Yes. Status. You are. You are high risk, low reward. These <laughs> Thank days. You. <laughs> Start of round seven between a Bobby and Larios. This is where hunger, hunger and attrition comes through. This is where you see with how much a fighter wants it, how bad a fighter wants it. We're in the seventh round of an eight-round fight. We know that the fight is coming to a close. There's no reason to hold back any, any energy. You must use everything that you've done. All of the conditioning you did in your camp should shine through right now. Well, you mentioned it. This is where we get to see what was done in camp. 
Good left hook. What's the difference, though, between emptying the tank and doing it without any recklessness? The difference is the way that you engage, okay? The, uh, Bobby having some fun in there. The way that you approach this fighter should be a lot more pressure-based rather than uh, point scoring-based because the pop shots and the point scoring is not going to give you an outstanding performance right now. It's more of a survival sort of instinct, the pop shot, and to stay away. You want to get inside and take the fight 100%. You definitely don't want to lose your fundamental, you know, mindset at all. Though. Good uppercut attempt there from Larios. That's the punch we have not seen too much of in this scheduled eight rounder. Very tit for tat right now. Good right hands landing from Abobi. Smart punching by Abobi. And scoring points here in round seven. Larios trying to get inside, work the body, landed a right, then a left. At this range in pace, I, I find it very difficult for Larios to, to win rounds. Mm -hmm. yep. Bobby's showing his hand speed, he's looking flashy. Not doing much damage, but he's definitely controlling the pace. Yes. That brought me back to what you said in between the last round. Bobby took some steam off of his shots, but he's landing the shots clean. That's very important when you come down to a decision. Oh, nice shot. Ooh, right hand there. And a left hook back from Nikita. Nice left hook. And Bobby coming in with a one-two combo. It seems like the referee is now not engaging as much to give them the opportunity to take the fight on the inside. Good left hook by Nikita Bobby in a straight right hand and another left hook. Oh, coming upstairs from Larios. Good exchanges here over the final minute of round seven. I think Bobby definitely <laughs> take this round. Split the guard with that right hand did Larios. And Larios tends to come on strong the last 30 seconds of every round. Nice oh, uppercut. Cut. From the right side by Larios, he's met with a right counter from Nikita Abobi. I'm not going to lie, I don't mind when they exchange. It makes it a lot more entertaining. Right. This is what the people want to see, especially in Texas. Body shots. Solid round of point scoring for Nikita Abobi in the seventh round. As I said before, these fights are so important for prospects. You have to have crowd-shifting performances at this moment. You have to have that. You cannot have the crowd disengaged. Everybody's looking. Everybody's trying to see and measure what you can be in front of a huge crowd. Yeah, Nikita did a good job in that round, flashing his hand speed, his head speed, moving that upper body very well. Got caught with a few shots, but landed some really good shots of his own. Now this is the time to empty the tank. Final three minutes about to commence between Nikita Ababi and Noe Larios Jr. I believe Nikita wins this fight easily on the scorecard. This is the eighth and final round. Yeah, he, he's landed the more consistent heavy shots. He's got the eye-catching shots. He's controlled much more of the pace of the fight. I, I agree. Here we go with round number eight, Ababi and Larios. And now that we're in that mindset, this lets me know that uh, Larios' corner should be telling him to go for broke right now because they know that he's not ahead on the scorecards. The only chance that he has at winning this fight is a knockout. So Ababi needs to be very technical, and he needs to understand that he's ahead on the scorecards and, uh, you know, kind of cruise to the finish in my mind. Ababi beginning this fight. Looking very energetic, calm on his feet. Oh, Larios in the middle rounds, gaining some steam, but here Ababi reeling in the momentum and the pace of this eight rounder. Good body shot. Coming with that left hand. The left hook by Larios. No, Larios, nice Larios has been able to land some heavy shots, so as long as this fight's on, he still has a chance. The Ababi jab finding a home here in the eighth round. Moments like that, that little tie-up we just seen, uppercuts are so important. That's a blind shot that can really destroy a fighter quickly. It's 1-2-1 one, one there from Nikita. Larios eats the left hand at the end. Here he's dishing some out. He's definitely aware that he has to go for damaging sort of uh, shots, Larios. So Nikita needs to stay aware. Need to see every shot. 
and uh, he can't have one mental lapse in there. 90 seconds remain. Larios trying to avoid two straight defeats after beginning his pro career at 14-0. and 0. Abobi Ooh, trying to stay undefeated. Good timing. Good connection from Larios. Target. Left hand to the body from Abobi. Oh, another nice uppercut. Nice. Big overhand right, counter right from Abobi. Lopez is, uh, I'm sorry, Larios is definitely going for it here. Yeah, he's bringing it. Putting a lot of pressure on Nikita. Final 60. Abobi with the combo. And a good right hand from Abobi as Larios comes in and is going to let the hands go. Larios is smart. I must give it to him. He's the one that's doing the thing that the judges want to see more, I believe, um, in this last round. But I still have uh, a Bobby far enough ahead on the cards that it won't matter if it goes to... Good work from Larios. Nice. Now nice. Bobby answering back. Larios trying to empty the tank. As Emma Williams said. Making the side nice. cross. Great exchange in the center of the ring. And Larios digging deep to the body. These two fighters mirroring one another over the nice. final 10. Ababi gets snapped back from a right hand. Oh, nice. Great fight. Exhilarating eighth Great. round to end it. Great finish to that fight. Exciting exchanges. Tough to score. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think Nikita had done enough, especially in those early rounds, but Larios did not make it easy. I think Nikita did more than enough, but I think um, both of these fighters need to understand the importance of the inside game. This is professional fighting here, and uh, I think they could take a lot more from fighters if they truly, truly take advantage of those moments inside. This could have been a good test here for Nikita Ababi. He may come out victorious here, but there were a lot of close rounds yes. in this contest. A lot of, lot of heating exchanges. Um, Ababi had some in his defense and concentration, got caught in some of those, the end of some of those rounds. But he's been out of the ring for, for a while now, and this is a, a good comeback fight against a stiff competition. So, Larios and Ababi finishing us up here on Before the Bell ahead of Rodriguez, Rungvisai in San Antonio. And early on, I know we enjoyed the rhythm and the speed we saw from Ababi. That really stood out in the early rounds. I think that's the deciding factor of this fight. Uh, the fact that Nikita got a lot of clean, undeniable shots in. He, took, he drew the power back to make it through the fight, but he did land the shots that were clean boxing. And that uppercut kind of opened the door for Larios to gain some momentum in the middle rounds of this contest. And he started and then ended a lot of the middle rounds with some serious momentum that could influence the judges here, Absolutely. like Emma was saying. And also, like we said before with Mon Roy, this is not a loss for Larios. This is not a loss for him at all. He will definitely be used um, to test young prospects coming forward. Then in the latter rounds, just felt like a Bobby regained some rhythm and control over this fight. We'll see on the judges' scorecards. Here is David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here in San Antonio, we'll go to the judges' scorecards. Ursulo Perez, Ellis Johnson, and Ruben Carrion all scored this bout identically, 78 to 74. For your winner, by unanimous decision, he's still undefeated, Nikita White Chocolate Abobi. The Nikita Abobi improving to 12 and 0. White Chocolate getting the victory after an eight month layoff. He comes to San Antonio and picks up a unanimous decision victory over Noe Larios Jr. 78-74 across the judges' scorecards. What do you guys think? That sounded about right to me. You know, like we, we spoke about it. I, I had Nikita ahead based on his, his ability to fight at the middle distance and the outside, his hand speed, and those eye-catching shots. But Larios was very much in the fight, took a lot of those middle rounds, um, was finishing strong during rounds. So that, that score sounds about right to me.